Okay, we're still on chapter 11, book of Proverbs. You know, there's an old saying, there's an old saying, things are good until they ain't. That's an old saying that I grew up with 40 years ago. Things are good until they ain't good. In other words, the Bible says there's a time for everything. There's a time for reckoning. There's a time for punishment. There's a time where God shows up and demands an accounting. Now, I say on this channel that I believe the rapture is coming within, you know, 10 to 15 years, or I think it's sooner, but it might be as long as 15 years. I don't see that myself, but and I believe God's going to have one last punishment before the rapture. And I was reminded of the saying, things are good until they ain't. And why is that? Well, that's what the Bible teaches. A day of mourning is better than the day of laughter. See, mourning is better than laughter. Mourning, like crying, M-O-U-R-I-N-G. Like you're mourning at a wet at a um, funeral <laughs> I almost said a wedding you're mourning at a funeral that kind of mourning sadness the Bible clearly teaches that it's better to be in a state of continued preparedness knowing what's coming upon the world. Do you see this world mourning or weeping? Oh my goodness. Do you see this world mourning or weeping for what's coming upon the world? The whole Bible talks about the last days. No, no. The world is in a state of partying right now. Drunkenness. High on the barbecue hog. High on the fried chicken. We got the most people who have never worked in the United States right now just standing around. Because they do not believe, because they do not believe the words the Bible is saying. If you believed or thought that what the Bible says is true and you are going to lose every single thing you own, what is the entire United States based on right now? It's not the Constitution. It's not um, friendliness. It's not... Um, Love thy neighbor. It's based on materialism. I got more stuff than you do. And if I have more stuff than you do, then I must be better than you are. Because in order to get more stuff, I had to do something better than you did. So I'm being rewarded with more stuff. See, you can only afford a 1990 Ford. I can afford a 2025 Ferrari. So I must be better than you. I must be better than you. It's just common sense. I have more money. Th that makes me better. I have more items in my driveway. That just makes me better. You can go, if you want to know what the last days are going to be like, go down the, the Ten Commandments, 
say everyone and then look around at all the people breaking those commandment that commandment right now what are we, what is the main problems in society here they don't talk about it in the presidential election the very first three commandments are like about not having false gods worshiping no other gods what are we doing the whole world is worshiping anything except Jesus Christ. Thou shalt not murder. We have mass shootings every day now. The world is at war with it, each its neighbors, the you know neighboring countries killing each other. Murder, murder, murder. Thou shalt not steal. We got mobs of people running into convenience stores and stealing a hundred thousand dollars worth of merchandise in 20 minutes running out and de devastating the business and the police never even showed up and i don't blame the police the mayor and the city council of those towns in those big cities told the police not to show up Thou should not commit adultery. What do we see? Continual, nonstop, everybody sleeping with everybody, men sleep with men, women sleep with women, people sleeping with 10 partners before they're 25 years old, living with three or four different people, trying it out, you know. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's being broken everywhere. This society cares more about sports. Football season just started. This society cares more about sports than it does um, the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Thou shalt not steal. I already did that one. Thou shalt not um, be envious of thy neighbor's goods. Covet thy neighbor's goods. Well, what do you what do you see? I need to get more than my neighbor has because that makes my neighbor better than me. You can just see everything that's going on right now. And, and what's being done about it? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, people complaining about their life, but you see anybody talking to um, God to repair their life? No. I'm talking about the Christian God, not the, the fake gods. They're not getting nothing from the fake gods either. Well, that would be an impossibility. They're not getting nothing from the fake gods. The fake gods have no power to give them anything. We were on verse 9. With their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. Wow. What does it say here? What does it say here? Gossip. Spreading false lies, false testimonies about their neighbor. The godless... The unsaved destroy their neighbors, but through knowledge the righteous escape these lies. See right there it's saying it's breaking a commandment about your neighbor. Through the blessing of the upright a city is exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked it is destroyed. The only thing that kept the United States prosperous was um, Jesus Christ. And the United States used to be, used to be at one time over 80% born-again Christian believers. 
So the hand of the Lord protected us. Well, now, we're only about 45% born-again Christian believers in America now. And not all of those are even practicing. They just claim to believe in Jesus as their Savior, but they don't do anything about it. They still live for the world. So you see, the, the blessing of, of the Lord is coming off a major part of the United States. And I will tell you this, I'll tell you this, my fellow Christians, believers. If the Lord's hand comes off our country, poof, we're done. It's over. We'll become uh, slaves to whoever comes in and overthrows our country. The only thing protecting America, it's not the military, it's the hand of God because of believers still live here and they pray. And God grants the believers his the prayers they're praying. Dear Father, please protect our nation. Please protect the city I live in. Please protect... No, no, most people now, they're just worried about what... Um, what kind of a car payment can I afford? Man, I seen a used car with 5,000 miles on it. It was a car, not a truck. And the car was uh, two years old. And the dealership was offering the car for the low payment. I'm not making this up. For the low payment of $1,300 a month, $1,300 a month. And you see, that's become the normal in America. That's normal. And then you just open up the book of Proverbs and you read, with the mouths of the godless with their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors. But through knowledge, the righteous escape. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. There you go. Who are the righteous? The believers. We're not righteous per se. We're righteous because our sins have been washed. Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. No. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. The wicked, after the 1,000-year reign of Christ, the wicked will perish forever, for all eternity. There will never be a wicked person ever again. And it says, the Lord laughs at them. And the angels and the believers, the saints, we roar, R-O-A-R, roar with shouts of joy in heaven when the wicked are um, cast away for all eternity. Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. Whoever decries their neighbor has no sense. You know, I know a lot of believers who sit around complaining about their neighbors all the time. You shouldn't complain about your neighbors. You should pray for them. As a Christian, you're supposed to be praying for your neighbor. Not complaining about your neighbor. You're supposed to be at work praying for your neighbor. Prayer is work. You're doing the works of um, God. Prayer is one of those works. Whoever, whoever decries their neighbor, you know, whoever cuts their neighbor down verbally has no common sense, but the one who has understanding holds their tongue or prays for your neighbor. A 
A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. I don't trust anybody in this area except myself or my wife. I've seen too many good Christian people spread a gossip down the room, rumor mill, the, the, the line of the rumors. I've seen it too many times. Now, I don't really, I don't have any secrets, actually. That's the best way to live. Don't have any secrets and nobody can, you know, run around saying things about you. Just don't have any secrets. Don't have anything that you would be ashamed about to be told in front of everybody. I always say you should live like a duck in water. You know, the world's going to throw water at you day and night. If you leave your house, the world's going to throw water at you. Meaning gossip, malice, mistrust, hatred. So you should be like a duck in water. When the water hits you, just let it bounce off and keep going. Don't even let it bother you. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm 62 years old now, so I'm really noticing a lot of retired people in their 60s and 70s. And man, some of these people are stupid. You can tell the non-believer. I mean, if you're in seven, your 70s and you, you go out and buy a $50,000 car for cash... You can tell they don't they don't follow and believe in Christ because nobody who's that old would go out and spend a large amount of their money to just buy a toy. In my opinion. In my opinion. If you're in your late 60s or 70s and you're living for God, you're not you're not going to care about that kind of stuff. Now, a better example is a house. If you're 72 years old and you follow Jesus Christ, you are not going to care about buying a four or five hundred thousand dollar house before you die. It's not going to happen. You don't live that way as a Christian. That's how you can tell someone goes out and buys a half a million dollar house before they die. That's a person living for themselves. They're not living for Jesus Christ. So if you want to know why the United States is having all these problems, you want to know why the United States is having all these problems, it's because we went and got rid of the enemy and we followed the enemy in the previous two generations and got rid of the Bible in the United States, took it out of the schools. I mean, we took the Bible out of some of the churches. You say, what? That doesn't make sense. I can take you to Christian churches today that don't preach the Bible. They preach good works and, um, you know, car washes and, and cookie bake sales. and They do a lot of great stuff every week and they preach the Bible almost nothing. I could take you to thousands of Christian churches that have said publicly, we no longer preach the Old Testament. We only believe in the New Testament, Jesus Christ. And we don't preach the book of Revelation because we're not really sure how that works, so we're not going to get into it. We don't want to offend anyone. We just want everybody to feel good. <laughs> That's why the United States is having these problems. But you out there, hold on to Jesus Christ real tight and you won't have these same problems. 
I can guarantee if you have a problem, it has something to do with something in the world. Something you're eating, something you're buying, something you're partaking in, something you're looking at, something you're tasting. All your problems are physical problems. And you physically are indulging in the things that Jesus Christ himself would never touch. And so what happens? If Jesus never touched them, what makes you think you're smart enough to touch them? A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. For la Verse 14, for lack of guidance, a nation falls. Here we go, I just said. I didn't know that was coming up. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. So what is guidance? What is guidance? Where are you receiving guidance? Who is giving you this guidance? For, la for a lack of guidance, a nation falls and is destroyed, see? A nation falls and is destroyed. But victory is won through many advisors. You know, every king, every um, king that lasts a long time in the Old Testament had a lot of advisors. They talked to the prophets, the priests, the advisors, people who prayed all day, people who heard directly from God, the Lord. Whoever puts up security for a stranger will, dis will surely suffer. You want to know what that really means? Do you want to know what that really, really means? Whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer. I've always read that as not not you're gonna you're gonna co-sign a loan for your neighbor or you know your your idiot kid who wants a you know, a new Corvette, and you want to sign the loan for them. Oh, my goodness. I, I, that happens, but I don't read it that way. Whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer. It's guaranteeing you will suffer. You know, I'm amazed how the Bible guarantees that someone will be suffered, suffering or, or destroyed if they do certain things, and then they go and do them anyway. They still do them. They say, oh, yeah, well, uh, that's not going to happen to me. But honestly, the truth is, they don't actually ever read the Bible. They don't read the Bible. They don't know the Word of God. You know, what's the Bible say? For lack of, you know, God's word, people are perishing. People are just jumping right off cliffs into self-destruction, and they don't even know what's happening. And so I read that as anyone who participates in the things of this world will surely guarantee to suffer. You're going to suffer. Why do you think that you are stronger than God? Why do you think that you are stronger than Jesus? Why do you think that you will not suffer? You know, I live in a small town, okay? And, and, if, and if you live in a small town or in your neighborhood or whatever, in a large city, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I live in this small town. And when times get go good, there's certain poor people that have good credit 
They don't have any money. They just have good credit. There are certain poor people who have fantastic credit, but they don't have any money. They have no money in the bank, nothing. But they have good credit. So, and I see this. I see poor people, and, and I know where they work, and I know how much they make. I don't care. I mean, I don't go around checking. I just, you can't help but No, I mean, if a person works down at the grocery store, you know that they make this much an hour, 40 hours a week. And if their wife works across town, you know she makes this much an hour, 40, 30 hours a week, whatever they work. And they go down... And I'm seeing this, I've been seeing this for a year now. They buy brand new automobiles that they shouldn't even be looking at. Now we're talking about if you participate in what the world is offering you, you're guaranteed to suffer. So that's what I'm saying. I see poor people in this small town and in every small town in America, but you know, I'm just talking about the town I live in. They'll make they'll make like thirty-six thousand dollars a year. And they bring home like twenty-nine thousand a year, which is nothing. But then they get their child care tax credit for their three children, which is like $9,000 now. And they take that $9,000 in February or March and they go down to the, um, they drive down to Eugene, Oregon, an hour away to the big, huge car dealers. And they say, oh, if you give us $9,000 down, you can, uh, we'll give you up to a $45,000 car. You'll only owe $35,000 for seven years. Your payments will only be $850 a month. <laughs> okay, so what do you think is going to happen in the future? The reason I brought that up is because I'm sitting here and somebody that I see around, you know, they just drove up in a brand new car, $750 a month payments. And the Lord has given me this ability to look five years into the future and say, wow, there's going to be a day of reckoning coming for that their situation if you bought a house you can't afford and you bought two car payments you can't afford and all your credit cards are maxed out and you can't even hardly afford the student loan payments and you got child support from a previous marriage and you got three kids in your house running around and school started and you're only making, you know, $15.25 an hour. Which is a lot more than some people make in the Midwest. They still got people back there making $7.25 an hour. That's the federal minimum wage. In some of the states back there. So I read, for lack of guidance, a nation falls. You know... Let's, t let's remove the word nation and put you in there or your neighbor or your minister or the guy down the street or the woman next door. For lack of guidance, a person is destroyed. Now, so, did God destroy you? Did God come along and destroy you? No. You destroyed yourself. Did God destroy you? No. God tried to give you guidance. God tried to give you salvation for free, for free, for free. And you rejected it. You rejected God's advice. You rejected God's guidance. You rejected God's advice about that woman to marry. 
God said, do not marry that woman. And you married her anyway to prove a point. And now 10 years later, everything you have is being destroyed. Because everything you touched for the last 10 years was poison. So what do you think is going to happen? Verse 15, whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to shake hands and pledge is safe. We're going to end right there. I told you this is a long chapter. We still got a whole column on the next half a page. Now listen, what did it just say? What did we just read? This is a very positive note. But whoever refuses to shake hands with the world is safe. See, we still live in a country that if you don't sign the loan, they can't come and take money away from you. If you don't buy the house, they can't touch your money. If you don't use the credit card, they can't charge you interest. If you don't commit adultery you won't suffer the the, um, the punishment of adultery if you don't steal you won't have to worry about it if you don't have any false gods you won't have to be destroyed by God whoever puts up security for things of this world I'm reading you will suffer But whoever refuses to shake hands with the world is safe. You're safe. You know, over the years, no matter where I live, this happens to all of us. People have come to me and asked me for help. And if I could give them some help, I'll be the first one to do it. As long as it ends there. And I explain it to them. I say, okay, you need um, $20 to make your rent this month. I'm going to give you the $20. You don't have to pay me back. Don't worry about it. But that's it. If you come to me for money ever again, the answer is no, so don't come. If you want me to start living with you and, and, and washing your laundry or cooking your meals and putting the spoon up to your little baby mouth, no. no. And you know what I'm saying is real. And now we got, um, you know, there's a local ad down in Coos Bay. It's funny. It's for an employment agency. And the ad, the guy on the employment agency, every one of their ads makes jokes, you know, come on, you know, some old timers talking and stuff. And this this old timers talking to um, Gen Z. <laughs> and he's trying to convince young people to come down to the employment agency and get a job. You know, that's what they that's how they make their money. And he says, Hey, so oh hey there, youngin. You been out of college now for two years. You think it's time you should get a job? <laughs> oh ouch. And then they have the young person go, Well, yeah, I mean, but I was relax relaxing and meditating and I was trying to, you know, figure out what my path in life is. Well, uh, what'd you go to college for there? Well, I went to college to um, study, you know, how to how to do the binding of books or something weird. <laughs> and he says, well, you need to come down to so-and-so employment agency and get yourself a real job and put that degree to use. And the person in the ad actually says, yeah, well, I know my parents are trying to kick me out of the basement. I'm going to have to get a job. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. You don't have to be in that situation in life. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be doing it. You don't have to be living this way. You know, if you're the kind of person... Now, I'm actually this person where everybody wants help, but I limit it. I, I don't go there. I don't do it. I don't go near it. Because the Bible, the Bible is all about you taking personal responsibility. See, go to the last day. Go to the last day, the judgment day. You're not going to be held responsible as a group. You're going to be held personally responsible for your own personal actions, your own personal sins. You are not going to be held personally responsible as a group. And that is how you are to live your life. So you come, you come back to, to today... How should you be living? You need to wake up and take personal responsibility for yourself. Now, I wasn't picking on young people. I, Like I said, I know a lot of old people. Imagine you go to heaven on judgment day. Now, it doesn't work this way, but just imagine. And Jesus Christ looks over and says, you, you there, down on the third row. And the guy raised his hand, yes, Lord. How come you bought a brand new $1 million house at age 90 years old? The guy says, oh, well, um, I, I wanted to enjoy myself for a few years. And the Lord says, you're 90 years old. Don't you think you should have spent your time and resources on spreading the word of God, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And you're up there on Judgment Day, and you say, well, I, I, can under I understand that now that I'm here, but... No, you understood it on earth. If you make 30000 a year, you shouldn't be buying a $50,000 car. You understand those things. Now, you guys know about me, and then I'll end this Bible study. I made three Bible studies just today alone. You guys know about me. I live a life of simplicity. I don't, you know, I'm living simple, simplicity. I'm debt-free. I think I would rather live in an old tree than go into debt. Believe me. I'd rather live, you know, three miles out in the woods in a tent than go into debt. I'd have better luck with a bear in the woods than I would a, a, a loan shark down at the used car company. Now I'm going to say that again. That sounds funny. I'd have better luck with a bear in the woods if I was completely covered in honey and nuts <laughs> than I would a loan shark down at the used car lot in Eugene. Think about it. Now, I tried to explain this to people before. You know they're not really selling you a car? You're like, well, what are they selling me? I... I I left with a car. They're selling you a financial instrument. You don't understand that. People don't understand. They're selling you a financial instrument alone. 
You know they can't make near as much profit on that car as they can the loan they're borrowing you? And people go, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to tell you something that may or may not blow your mind. There's a lot of people who, they go and get the used cars, and they don't charge any more to the customer than they paid for them themselves. So they, they go and buy cars for $10,000, and they sell them for $10,000. So where do they make their money? They only do loans at 24% interest. That's where they make their money. Now think about it. On one car, now if you're a multimillionaire as the business owner, you're going to make a huge investment. You're going to go down to the corner. You're going to get a car lot, a little um, pavement, you know, parking lot. You're going to put 100 cars on it. $10,000 cars times 100 is um, $10 million. Or it's a million dollars. No, 10000 Yeah, it's a million dollars. You only need a million dollars to go into this business. Now, listen to me. I'm telling I know what I'm talking about. This is something you've never heard before. So you can take your million dollars to the stock market and you might lose money or you might gain 10%. But listen, I'm telling you how to gain 100% interest. People who are loan sharks, they know what they're doing. So they go down with their million dollars. They got 100 cars, $9,999. And if you walk in with cash to buy a car, they won't sell it to you. I'm not making this up. They say, we only sell cars to people who um, are financially distressed and need the a, a good um, opportunity to get their credit back. Ha, 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 get their credit back. So anyways, I'm being sarcastic. So on one car, they charge close to 25% interest. So on a $10,000 car the very first year, on that $10,000 loan, you're going to pay $2,500 in interest. No principal, and your principal only goes down about $1,000, about $1,400. So now listen, they sell you a car for six to seven years. So the first four years, they make $10,000 profit on the interest only. And they know at what percentage people will default and all that. They got it all worked in. So, listen, every five years, they double their, their million dollars. If you go to the stock market and get 7% at seven years, you double your money. These people double their money every four and a half to five years. And they have no risk at all whatsoever, because they have a, a um, they have an actual product, a durable good that is in their hand. And if something happens, they got insurance. They'll just give them their money back. You give your your million dollars to stock market, you don't actually own anything. You just own a piece of paper. You put a million dollars in 100, 10,000, 100 cars, 10,000 each. You own 100 cars. You can always get at least your million dollars back. There's no risk at all whatsoever. I just know a lot about business stuff because I started, you know, managing places by age 20. So... So now check this out. They won't sell you a car unless you finance it. 
They want people to come in and finance the car. They don't care if they make money on the car. They only care about the money they're going to make on the interest. So check this out now. Check it out. So some guy, you get um, you get two guys, two real good loan shark guys. You're not actually buying a car. You're buying a loan at 25% interest. That's what you bought. The car is going to blow up way before the loan is ever paid off. They're selling you these $10,000 cars. They got 180,000 miles on them. Okay, so you got two guys running this place. And every four and a half to five years, they each make $500,000 again. <laughs> I'm telling you how it works. You think you're going down to buy a $10,000 car. You better read the fine print, my friend. So what does the Bible say? Those who participate in the things of this world will surely suffer destruction at some point. Now listen. Destruction is guaranteed. It's guaranteed by God and guaranteed by the world. Now, the world guarantees destruction because the world is a liar. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He doesn't come to help you. I hear people say, the devil is my friend. No, the devil hates your guts. You are a human being made through Christ. The devil hates you. The devil hates Christ. The devil tried to um, defeat God, which is crazy to think about, but so, someone trying to defeat God. So, But God says, if you do not participate in those things, if you do not participate... Your safety is guaranteed. See, I'm not going to have anybody knock on my door tonight and say, hey, where's the rest of the money you owe me? I'll say, you got the wrong house. Because they have no documents with my signature on anywhere. Nobody can claim that I owe them money. I owe God everything. I owe my parents for raising me. I owe my wife for, you know, putting up with me for 40 years. But we don't owe someone down at the bank anything. If you participate in the things of this world, it's guaranteed that you will be destroyed several times in your life before you die and before you um, go to the judgment seat of Christ. But Jesus is given a better offer. Jesus has a much better offer. He said, if you follow me, if you keep my laws and decrees and commandments, if you pray and if you sincerely follow me and you live in a way like my son Christ lived and you live a life of simplicity, I, God says, I guarantee I will protect you and keep you safe. And if something happens to you down there, you'll be in heaven with me for all eternity so you won't have to worry about it. That's the trick of the world. If you follow the world, you're going to be destroyed on earth. And then when you die, you're going to be sent to hell and be destroyed eternally. 
All you got to do is read the words of the Bible. They're right in there. They, you're guaranteed you're going to suffer. You're going to be destroyed.